everyone and welcome to my review of the PRS Maple Limited SE Custom 24 that was announced last week. Um, hope you enjoy. So, uh, it's based on the Paul Reed Smith Custom 24, um, but this one's made in Korea as opposed to uh, America. Um, for the most part, it's a standard SE Custom 24. Um, we've got a nice slim Sipo mahogany back. Uh, there's a solid maple cap with a very thin figured flame maple veneer on top to give it some look. Um, this one is finished in grey black, um, which gives it a nice understated look. Um, there's five other finishes available in this range. Uh, there's a sapphire that absolutely pops. It's just beautiful. Um, there's two sunbursts. There's a more Gibson inspired vintage sunburst and a more Fender inspired uh, three color sunburst. Um, in addition, there is also a purple burst and a fire red burst that are unique to the Maple Limited. Um, you've got the SE trim, you've got a three-way blade switch, master volume, master tone with a push-pull coil split. Um, you've got the standard SE tuners, non-locking, uh, plastic nut, um, wide thin maple neck. Um, but the selling point of this limited edition is the maple fingerboard, which is unique in the SE line and indeed unique in the PRS line right up until you get to uh, um, almost the very top, top end in wood library or artist pack. Now bearing in mind those good guitars are going to cost you over four grand. Um, this bad boy is only seven nine nine. Um, so if you love maple fingerboards, but you can't stretch to a wood library or an artist pack, this is the one you need to be looking for. Um, interestingly, uh, the back of the neck is painted. Um, it's, you can tell that it's been fully glossed and then masked off and cut back to a satin finish. And it's beautifully done. Um, there's no, there's no tool marks, there's no sandpaper marks, it is pure satin um, and it feels wonderful. But bear in mind that because it was once gloss, um, after a few months of playtime, it will buff up to a sheen again. Um, so that's just something to bear in mind, it's not a design fault, that's just what happens when you satin a neck in this manner. <laughs> Thank you. 
In terms of the neck itself, um, this is listed as a wide thin, um, but it's bigger than any other wide thin I've ever played. If you've ever been put off by PRS wide thin, have a look at these because it's, it's different somehow. Um, people who are used to vintage fender type necks are going to be very at home on this profile straight away. Uh, it's a 25 inch scale uh, with a 10 inch fingerboard radius and 24 absolutely wonderfully finished mirror smooth frets. Um, they're not the biggest frets you'll ever play, um, but they're, they're just beautifully finished. I've never seen a Korean guitar with this level of detail in the frets. Um, absolutely wonderful. So these are made up, made in Korea, but they are set up and fine tuned uh, by PRS Europe. Um, and the reason for that is these are a European limited run. Um, however, if you want one, there's no rosewood. So um, I know there's plenty of guitar, uh, guitar stores in Britain that are willing to ship these to the States or further afield if so required. The fingerboard, um, I'm so glad they've left the fingerboard set in. Um, I'm not a fan of Fender lacquered maple fingerboards or, you know, that style. Um, so to have set and smooth maple um, is absolutely wonderful. Really puts you more in touch with the wood. Um, the nut seems to be really well cut. Um, no complaints there. When, when I was tuning, uh, there was no pings or clicks, which are the signs of a poorly cut nut. And the tuners are fine. Um, I know a lot of people with SEs like to swap them out to locking, um, which is fine. You know, I prefer locking tuners. Um, I find it makes restringing a bit quicker, but these are perfectly functional and tuning wise, equally as stable as, you know, a Fender guitar with a Fender style trim or similar at this price point. I um, don't know if it will come across on the camera. But you can see how when the guitar's been set up, um, the strings have been wrapped over themselves and locked in that way. And that really helps with the tuning stability. Um, if you go on the PRS website, um, there's a, a video by a chap called Skitchy who shows you to do exactly that method. Subjectively, visually, I think this looks absolutely fantastic. Um, I love the blackbirds on the maple. Um, in this finish, I really like the zebra pickups. Um, I think it gives it a nice kind of monochrome feel. I think if they'd have gone double black bobbins, it might have looked a bit too dark. Um, black speed knobs, really comfortable, really nice feel to them. Um, and brownie points for PRS. Um, this is the first PRS I've ever found where you can turn the tone knob all the way up to 10 and still engage the push-pull. Um, I think that's whatever they've done to change that, absolutely brilliant move because in the heat of the moment on the stage, um, it's a lifesaver. Uh, on other PRS I've found I've had to roll the tone back to like 9.8 before I can engage, whereas this you can just go straight up and down without having to do the twist as well. It's a very comfortable guitar, um, nice thin body, contours in all the right places, the beveled tops give some of that luxurious feel whilst keeping the price down without having to do the full violin carve of the American models. Um, the satin neck is wonderful. Um, some of you might know I helped to run uh, PRS Guitar Owners Worldwide, which is the biggest unofficial PRS forum on Facebook. Um, and earlier in the year, I did a poll. Um, there were three options, and it was about neck finishes. Uh, the three options were, do you prefer gloss painted necks? Do you prefer satin finished necks? Or do you prefer bare or oiled wood necks? Um, in third place was the gloss finished necks by a mile. Very few people stated that they preferred a gloss finished neck. 
Uh, some of the comments were they feel sticky, they get slippery if you're on a hot stage. Um, second place were the bare wood and oiled necks, but the winner by an absolute mile were satin finished necks. Um, and I fed the results to uh, the poll back to PRS. Um, and what I've noticed is the last two limited edition SE models that have come out um, from PRS Europe have had satin finished necks. Um, so perhaps an example there of PRS listening to what their customers have, are asking for. Um, but whatever, it feels fantastic. I was dubious at first um, when, I, when I found out they were doing a Maple, limited, maple Neck limited edition um, and knowing that both neck shaft and fingerboard were going to be maple, I was expecting to see uh, maple on the back of the neck and maple on the head, headstock face. Um, so I was dubious but open minded. Um, and I've got to say, this painted satin neck feels fine. Personally, um, I might have preferred a more open pour woody finish but it feels great um, and as I say that's totally subjective. Um, objectively it's a very well finished neck um, and a very smooth player. In terms of electronics, uh, as I already said we've got three-way blade switch, we've got master tone, push-pull, uh, two humbuckers which are the 8515S. Um, so they're based on the American 8515 pickups but they're wound in Korea. Um, I think they sound fantastic. Um, I've had a few guitars that have had XX slash 15 pickups. Um, I've, had, I've had a couple with 8515s. I've had one with 5815LTs. Um, and the family have, has got a distinct sound. Um, and the S versions are definitely, definitely worthy of inclusion in that family. Um, they don't sound exactly the same as the American ones, uh, but they are in the same tonal ballpark. Um, specifically, uh, they don't split in the same way um, for some reason. I think because the American ones tend to have the, the extra winds um, kicked in when you, when you split. So on the American ones, it's actually uh, a bit of a complex coil tap, whereas on this, it sounds like it just splits the humbucker in half. Um, so this is a true coil split. So I think that accounts for the difference in tone there. And if I'm being ultra picky, I don't think these have the same clarity under high gain that the American family has. Um, but you'd be hard, hard pressed um, in a dense mix with lots of distortion to tell the difference between the two. Um, I think despite, the, uh, despite the, the modest output of these, I think they're very good pickups for hard rock metal, um, but I think they're also sweet enough for things like jazz, blues, country, pop, indie, shoegaze. The XX slash 15 pickups are in my top three pickups ever. Um, and these these are worthy of the name as I've already said. Start off with a Fender style clean sound. Uh, this is Bridge in Full Humbucker. And Bridge Split Pickup. Middle position, both humbuckers in full humbucker mode. Uh, both pickups this time with the coal split engaged.
uh, neck pickup full humbucker mode. And finally, neck position with coil split engaged. So as you could probably hear there, um, there is quite a volume drop between the humbucker modes and the coil split modes. Um, it's not insurmountable and you can use it to your advantage if you're the kind of player who likes to drive your amp from the guitar. Um, you can actually make quite good use of that for helping you achieve some clean sounds through quite a high gain amp. Um, Actually, if we switch over to like a, a well, I don't know, Marshall, Marshall JCM type sound, I'll see if I can demonstrate that. So uh, bear with me. Um. <laughs> So that's on the bridge pickup in full humbucker mode, and we'll just engage the coil split. So because uh, cause we've got quite a lot of gain on the amp, or the amp model in this case, uh, it's compressing more so that volume drop isn't quite as apparent, but it's definitely cleared up the sound a little bit. So if we would then roll the... Uh, volume down to about six, six and a half. Still call split. That's a usable clean tone. That's nice. Um, so yeah, as I say, you can use that perceived volume drop to your advantage if you're that kind of player. Um, it's just an extra tool in the toolbox. As I said earlier, I think these pickups do work well um, under quite high gain, despite the modest output. Um, so let's try a bit of riffage. So, in terms of a conclusion, um, pros, uh, it's a fantastically well built guitar, the finish is perfectly applied, the components are great, um, it stays in tune. I know a lot of people criticise SEs saying they don't stay in tune. Um, I've never found that myself, um, I think they're fine, as good as any other guitar with vintage style trim and non-locking tuners. Uh, simple mod to stick on locking tuners if you wish, but it's certainly not essential. Same with the nut, you know, you can you can buy the PRS American core nut, uh, which Paul says sounds better. Um, it seems to be more lubricated, um, you know, um, but it's not essential. Um, Pickups are great. You, the only reason you would want to change the pickups is, after, is if you were after a very specific sound. Um, but for almost every style of music, I think these pickups have musicality, they have tone, um, they have dynamics. I think they're wonderful. I think the look is great, um, but that's subjective, um, especially in this grey-black. 
I love the kind of monochrome effect it has. Um, it's, it's brilliant. Um, I think all the colours are great um, in this range. Some of them are exclusive to the Maple Limited. Um, the only one I'm not sure about is the Purple Burst because it's got amber knobs. If it had black knobs it'd be fantastic but it's got amber knobs and they just look weird. Um, in terms of cons, objectively I can't find any. Um, and I'm not just trying to blow smoke up your ass. For £799, this is a phenomenal guitar. Um, absolutely amazing. Finish is flawless. Um, the sounds are great. Uh, you know, personally, I would have preferred a natural open pore finish neck. Um, but that's my preference, you know, that, that doesn't affect anything objective. Um, your mileage may well vary. Um, what I love about this, as opposed to the S2 and CE line, is the back plates are recessed. PRS, please, please do this on the more expensive models. You do it on the lower end, i.e. SE. You do it on the higher end, i.e. core. Do it on the stuff in the middle. So, you've got £800 burning a hole in your pocket. Do you buy an SE Maple Limited Custom 24? For me, yeah, all day long. Um, in fact, I'm going to have to think long and hard about sending this one back. Because it's a great, great guitar. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the review. Um, if you have done so, please like, subscribe, share, and all of that jazz. And uh, please check out my website, www.guitargo.co.uk. Um, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.